Oh man, when I found out that I could play Grand Theft Auto on my Game Boy, I thought, this is amazing, I have to get this. Now, okay, so I've never actually played a Grand Theft Auto game before, but I did check out some gameplay videos of the original Grand Theft Auto game, and from what I can tell, you know, the one for PlayStation and DOS, uh, from what I can tell, this is actually a direct port. This in itself is worth recognition. I mean, the Game Boy has many ports of games from the NES, like, you know, DuckTales and Battletoads. It has ports of older arcade games like Pac-Man and Battlezone. It has ports of Sega Genesis games like Aladdin uh, and Super Nintendo games like Earthworm Jim and Contra 3. But this, this is one generation past even that. This is a PlayStation game ported to the Game Boy and not like a reimagining or anything. It's the original game. That's pretty impressive. <sighs> I mean, the ROM for this game is four megabytes big. That is absolutely enormous. I mean, that's it. There is literally no officially licensed Game Boy or Game Boy Color game bigger than this. All right, so in this game, you run around, you get random jobs to do from local gangsters, and you steal cars. It's a simple gameplay loop made more complex by the challenge of navigating the city and avoiding the police. It's a clever idea. And just like the later games in the series, you can complete you can completely ignore your jobs and just kind of cruise around the city doing whatever you want, you know, stealing cars, exploring the city, running over people. Uh, the controls are a little goofy at first, uh, but they work just fine. Uh, you walk around on your feet the same way you drive a car, and that is by holding the A button to go forward and pressing left or right to rotate in those directions. Uh, I really appreciate this for two reasons. So one, I think walking around in all directions, like all eight directions in an open world game can be a little clunky with the D-pad without like a joystick. Uh, and two, it gives my brain less adjusting to do when I get into a car. <laughs> uh, getting into a car is also a little weird. You have to walk up to a stopped car while holding the A button and then press the select button to go inside it. Uh, it seems overly complicated at first, but you've also got the B button to shoot any guns you're holding, and the start button to pause the game, so the Game Boy runs out of available buttons pretty quickly. In regards to the music, oh, I was going to complain about the music, but actually a few of the songs are pretty darn catchy. Unfortunately, even the best tunes in the game are hindered by a very simplistic implementation. There's no reverb, no pumping bass line, no volume shifts, no drumming percussion. It all ends up sounding very hollow or empty. Uh, it's passable in the game. I mean, I didn't want to turn off the audio or anything, uh, but it is far from the type of chip tunes I'll be listening to in my actual car. Uh, I like the graphics. Uh, they're not above average, but they serve the game well, and it's easy to see what's going on. Oh man, I especially love how they were able to show the player character as a little guy walking around from a top-down perspective in an 8x8 pixel sprite. I was super impressed by that. It looks really good. I think it looks really good. I mean, that I can't imagine uh, being tasked with drawing that and animating that. As for the rest of the game, uh, the cars and the environments look good, uh, but not as good as, say, Micro Machines for Game Boy. Uh, they get the job done. So there are some differences when playing the game on a Game Boy versus the Game Boy Color. Uh, the most notable difference is the speed in which the game runs. The game runs uh, just a little more slowly on the original Game Boy compared to the Game Boy Color. Uh, and I noticed this particularly while driving a car. On a Game Boy, the cars drive at just the right speed to feel fast while still, still giving me enough time to maneuver around the streets. Uh, but on the Game Boy Color, the cars just move so fast that I'm constantly bonking into buildings. You know, and then I have to stop, I have to put the car in reverse, uh, turn around, and then continue driving again until I bonk into the next building. And I do that over and over again. <sighs> so as far as gameplay goes, I actually kind of preferred playing it on the original Game Boy. It was, it was more fun and easier to get around. Uh, I did load a, uh, the game up in a debugger you know, on a, in an emulator. And I saw that the developers actually enable, uh, what is it, double speed mode when played on a Game Boy Color. 
which means the CPU and the DMA graphics transfers are running at twice the speed of the original Game Boy. Uh, so that would explain the differences in speed. Uh, the other difference is in the graphics. Now, I know <laughs> one is in color and the other is in grayscale, but in addition to that, a lot of the finer details in the tiles, like uh, moss on the bricks or shadows and stuff like that, they're just gone on the original Game Boy. And even some tiles themselves are completely missing, like uh, storm drains on the streets. Uh, I took a peek at video RAM while the game was running and saw that the developers took advantage of the extra video RAM on the Game Boy Color to load all of those extra tiles. It's pretty cool seeing the extra power of the Game Boy Color being used in practice. Uh, none of this really affects the gameplay, of course, but it's interesting difference. So some of the gameplay in this game is a little clunky and even glitchy at times. Like, I've gotten myself stuck getting out of my car while being too close to a wall uh, with no other option but to reset the game. Uh, I don't know, it's not terrible and it doesn't ruin the game, but it is noticeable. The amount of little, little glitches are noticeable. Little bugs. Now the biggest problem in this game... Uh, the biggest problem is the cars. Like, there is hardly any of them driving around. Here I am in a thriving city, standing in the middle of the street, and there's just nothing. Like, one time, I had to get to another part of the city for a job, right? So I start walking, thinking, oh, I'll just grab a car on the way there. Nope, I didn't see a single car. I ended up walking the whole way. <laughs> I loaded up the sequel, Grand Theft Auto 2, which is a Game Boy Color exclusive, or only game and they did end up fixing the problem. I mean, there are cars filling the streets in that game, uh, but in this game, the first one, it's just so empty. And the whole feel of Grand Theft Auto really loses a lot of its charm in an empty city. I mean, how am I supposed to commit Grand Theft Auto if there's no autos to Grand Thieve? <sighs> oh, also, this is kind of cute. <laughs> so because this is a Nintendo Game Boy game, a lot of the dialogue has been softened compared to the original. So you get dialogue like, <laughs> Bring the car to Dully's in West Park. Move it! We got some fresh coffee here! <laughs> and, Bubby's got a sticky love nest in South Island Heights. Take me there! And then when you finish the mission, Not bad, kid! I'm gonna make sure you get your cut. You wanna come in for some coffee, eh? <laughs> it made me giggle. Uh, anyway, I guess I don't really have a strong opinion about this game. Uh, the music is catchy, but weak. Uh, the graphics are serviceable, but don't really stand out. Uh, the gameplay is challenging, but also sparse uh, and a little repetitive. Uh, the programming is, is an impressive feat, but also a little buggy. Being able to drive cars around a large open city is a fun and unique experience on the Game Boy but the inability to see far enough ahead of you while driving hinders the experience, also needs more cars on the road. I don't know. Ultimately, I just got this game because I wanted to be able to say I play Grand Theft Auto on my Game Boy. Okay, so now that I got my review thingy out of the way, I wanna take some time and speculate about the size of this game. So as I mentioned, this game is four megabytes big. And to emphasize, that is enormous for a Game Boy game. So the biggest games released on the original Game Boy were only a quarter of that size at one megabyte. But this game at four megabytes, there's only like 20 or so games released for the Game Boy Color that were this big. Uh, but here's the strange thing. The sequel, Grand Theft Auto 2, is only two gigabytes. That's half the size. And I have a guess as to why. See, the first game only came out barely one year after the release of the Game Boy Color. My guess is that it was originally planned to be a Game Boy game, but when the Game Boy Color came out, of course they were going to add color. And they did that by simply doubling everything. So doubling the number of tiles, doubling the game maps that say where the tiles go, stuff like that. And the sequel that came out the following year was only supported on the Game Boy Color. No backwards compa compatibility with the original Game Boy, so it ended up being half the size. Once again, this is all just speculation, 
I'm not smart enough to know how to actually check the data inside the game and verify any of this, but I think it's fun to think about.